Hi, Pete Scargill here. What I'm about to show you are two mains control units which are described in my blog, which I shall link to. Um, and there are photographs to go with this and extra information. Basically, two units. One is 22 centimeters across, 11 centimeters high, wide rather, and about four centimeters high. It plugs into the mains and it has four outputs which control other mains items. It also has a serial interface and it has two Ethernet connections. The four outputs have lights and buttons. The other unit is just a small inline unit that plugs into the mains and has a mains socket on the output. There are sockets available for all different countries. That simply has indicators and doesn't have any buttons on the front or any controls. It's just simply remotely controlled. Enough of that. That's described in the blog. Let me get down to showing you what these things can do. So they're not exciting to look at. They're just plain black boxes. Let's take the large power PDU 4C unit. What you're looking at here is its first screen. And I have on screen buttons here. As you can see, I can turn the items on and off individually or all together. I'm going to turn them off all together. And I'm going to tell it not to ask me that question again. Right, it's turned all four off. The very slight delay between each one, which is sensible because they could have a total of 10 amps current usage. So it's best to have a slight stagger. All right. I can turn them on individually. I've already pressed that don't ask me again button. As well as just turning things on and off, which again you can do at the units themselves or at the big unit or remotely or via a number of other means, which I'll come across in a minute. As well as doing all that, you can reset the units you can set timers. You can configure watchdogs for them. So this is for pretty important stuff that needs to be ultra reliable. As many of you will know, I use little Sonoff units to control mains items. They're very cheap and very simple to use, but usually to avoid using the cloud, as they call it, you end up having to put custom software in it. This is just straight out of the box. I've not made any changes to these units other than set them up in the first place. So for each output, you can monitor how much power it's using. True power factor, power, current and energy. As well as controlling the outputs, you can use various protocols. In this case, SNMP MQTT which I've already set up there to my local MQTT broker, but you could use a public broker if you wanted. Control them over the serial console, over JSON, XML, over a simple URL, or Modbus. You can set up users and give control over what these users can do. On the smaller other unit, you don't have this level of control, but then that's a lot cheaper. This four-way unit, you have a whole range of controls you can see here. Schedules, you can schedule the outputs to come on at different times. You can do various actions in a language called Lua, which you can type in the web interface, which is where I am now. And you have various settings from security. You can use HTTPS, secure connection or not, as you prefer. I'm not because I use a VPN in my building here for outside access, but you might want to use that. Time and date, you can pull that off the web or do it manually. Set time zones. You can set up a, a mail server to have the unit send out emails if it comes across any problems. In my case, I will be using this with MQTT 
and another unit which is perfectly capable of sending emails out but you could use these standalone. The firmware can be updated over the web automatically or manually and you've got various system controls. All in all pretty impressive and if that's not enough you have a complete logging system built into the unit so you've got a permanent log if you like of oh, which you can export to a file of what it does. You can get a hold of an online user manual and discover about other NetIO products all in the same interface. The languages available here are Dutch, English, Spanish and Italian. I have to say, you'll have to forgive me if I sound over enthusiastic, oh, this is pretty good. The small separate unit has one output which you can turn on and off here in the web interface. You can't turn it on and off locally. It's just a thin inline unit for the mains. You've got a simplified version of the uh, remote um, protocols to control the unit. Simplified version of users. And settings again for network configuration time and date, firmware updates and system. So all in all, pretty impressive. Back to the original unit. I probably need to stick something on the output there. I don't have the right kind of connector. You can see what those connectors are. I don't have those up, but I'll stick a couple of wires in and put a load on just to show you it running. So for the purposes of demonstration, I've put um, an oil heater on output number one. When I press that top button, I don't know if you heard that, but that was the heater coming on. Well under the 10 amp total capability of this unit, 6.44 amps. Two, two watt hours, it says. I don't know. what It's using 1500 watts altogether. Turn it off, and there it is. There'll be a lot more about this on the blog, but I hope that just gives you an idea. I think um, what you might want to do if you're interested in these is check by what they mean by 10 amp. Is that 10 amps, as the Chinese call it, which is 10 amps non-inductive, or will that actually handle 10 amps worth of heater, which is an inductive load? It's never really clear, it's certainly in the Chinese adverts, but this is not a Chinese, Chinese unit, it's a European unit. So it could well be that 10 amps means 10 amps. What I normally do is when I put a heater on, I put a timer on it so that it will eventually turn off after a while. If I forget all about it. Anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this.